Okay, we're going to be doing a titration demo for you guys on video. A um, couple of things that we want to remind you about with burettes. First thing is that reminder that burettes read, read backwards. So if I'm reading this burette right here, this is 7.1, not 8.9. So just remember that when you're reading it. That's going to be really important. The other thing that you want to do is when you start, when you start and you see your burette, you want to check to make sure that there's no bubbles in there. So for example, right here, this burette has a huge bubble right there. So what I would do to fix that is just before you even start reading, don't even take a data point or anything like that, is just open your burette so that that bubble comes out. And then you can start that. If you don't do that, that would count as a human error and you would have to start over. The other thing that we want to talk to you about a little bit is just how a burette works. So if your spigot right here is horizontal, it's closed. If it's vertical, it's open. If you remember from the very first lab that we did during the year, people kind of panic sometimes and try to close it and end up just turning it. And all they're doing is opening and closing it. This is a very, very, very particular lab. So just remember, horizontal is closed, open is vertical. Um, the other thing that you want to check when you're working with your burettes is to make sure that you have enough liquid in there, either an acid or a base. And so this burette right here, for example, does not have enough liquid to start because we need 10 mils of our acid. So you would want to make sure that you fill that up before you start working with anything because you would have to start all the way over in order for you to get a good reading. When you start your lab, you're going to get a 125 mil Erlenmeyer flask to start. And if you notice, this one's a little bit dirty. And really all that is is dried phenolphthalein. But we want to rinse it out too, just in case, in case there's any leftover acid or base. We want to try to get as accurate of reading as possible. So we're going to rinse out our flask to start. And then what we're going to do is come over to our burettes. All of our acids are going to be at the front. And we're going to take an initial reading of our acid. So right now, this initial reading is at 7.1. So I'm going to record that in my data table right here in our worksheet. Then, if I'm at 7.1, I want to get 10 mils out. So I'm, my goal is 17.1. If I go over 17.1, that's not a source of error. I just need to record. 10 is just a little bit easier to do with our calculations. So now I'm going to get out 10 mils. And I'm going to watch. I'm going to keep my hand over the area where it's around 17 so that I can read it a little bit better. And once I start getting closer to that 17 mark, I might actually even kind of slow how fast the acid is coming out of the burette by turning the spigot at an angle. All right, so now I got 17.1. So then I want to make sure that I record that in my table again, right there. And then, of course, I have 10 mils of an acid. So all of that stuff you will record in your data table. Before you leave the front, what you have to remember to do is get phenolphthalein. Sometimes the phenolphthalein bottles might be strewn about up here, so you just gotta find it. It's gonna be labeled in a little bottle right here. So you wanna put two to three drops of phenolphthalein in your flask. If you forget this part, it will never turn pink and your titration will never work. Once you've got your indicator and your acid, you're going to walk to your station. And first, I'm going to make sure that there's enough base in here so that I can make this work. And right now I'll tell you, you're going to be in the, the 25 to 30 range, maybe the 20 to 30 range mils of base for any of our acids to work. And so I can see I have enough base, so I'm going to go ahead and start. And I'm going to take my initial reading of my base, which is 14.5. This one is super important to record because you can't go backwards. So then I'm going to start my titration. And if you notice, the minute that I put my base into my acid, it's going to start turning pink. So you're going to put your base in your acid and write kind of where the, the base is hitting the acid, it's turning pink. And I'm going to put the base in the acid and I'm going to swirl it a little bit. And really what you're doing is giving those hydrogens and hydroxides time to find each other and create water. And the reason why it turns pink initially is because those hydroxides haven't found time 
to find that hydrogen molecule that's attached to the phenylphthalein indicator. So as you can see, I'm going to put the base in there and it keeps turning pink and I'm just going to keep swirling for a minute. And if you notice that that pink is actually starting to stick around a little bit longer, which is good. We're getting close to our equivalence point and actually to our end point, really. And so I'm going to drop the base in there, the drop and swirl, if you will. And this part takes time and patience. This is not a fast part of the lab. But if you're patient with it and you do it right, you only have to do it once. So if you can see as I swirl, obviously that pink is sticking around just a little bit longer. A little bit longer. It's taking more and more time for those hydrogens and those hydroxide ions to find each other. And the reason why it's still clear is there's still a few hydrogen ions in there that the phenylphthalein is attached to. Okay, so did you see how long that stuck around? So I'm really close. So at that point, when it starts sticking around like that, I actually recommend going drop by drop. So very, very small amount, drop by drop. And at this point, what you also want to make sure that you do is start squirting down the sides. So you have a water bottle at your station, and it's just tap water, and that's not a source of air. But you want to kind of squirt down your sides, and you want to squirt the tip of the burette off to make sure that there's nothing, no acid on the side of your flask. And so we're going to go drop by drop here and be really patient. Might put a couple in there at a time and swirl. So it's definitely sticking around a little bit longer, so I'm going to get the last drop off the edge of that burette. Notice how careful I'm being with turning the spigot, where I'm only letting one drop out at a time. The pink is sticking around a little bit longer, so that helps me know that I'm really close to my end point. Remember, your end point is where your color starts changing, which is, for us, very close to our equivalence point. Okay, I'm very close. That light pink stuck around for just a little bit, but now it went away. So now I need to really be going drop by drop. And there's a drop right on the end there that I'm going to squirt off with my water bottle and go ahead and swirl. And at this point, it's pretty light pink, but as I swirl, it still went away. So now, again, this is where if you're patient, you're going to do really well the first time around. I'm going to go two drops there. Get all of my acid off the side of my flask. And I'm going to swirl. So I, I think this will work, but I'm going to give it a second and swirl because I notice that it's actually getting a little bit lighter. So I might want to go one or two more drops. And it did disappear. So again, I'm very close and it's worth being patient here. I'm going to get the last little bit off the edge of my, or off the tip of my beaker there, or excuse me, my burette. I'm going to swirl. Again, I've got to give it time. I've got to give those hydrogens and those hydroxide ions an opportunity to come together. So right now, if I compare it to my paper, I can see it's got a little bit of a pink hue, but I wouldn't consider this close enough. So I'm going to go one more drop. still pretty close, so I'm going to get the last drop off of my edge of my burette. We're going to swirl that. That's a nice baby pink. I might go one more drop here. There we go. It's a great color. Get the last little bit here swirl for a second. As long as that stays put, this is an excellent color that you want for your titration. So at this point, what I'm going to do is once you start reaching where that acid or the, the color actually starts staying put a little bit, you might want to read your burette so you have an idea of where and how many mils it's actually going to take. Just in case you go over, then when you titrate again, you're going to be able to figure out like, okay, I'm close to that value and you really do need to start slowing down. So right now, my burette is reading 32.7. So I would put that into 
my data table, and then I can calculate the total amount of my base. From there, you're going to be able to compare it with, you're going to be able to actually calculate it using your titration equation, and you're going to be able to compare it to the accepted molarity of the acid and see how close you are. One thing I want to show you is that when we are close to our endpoint, you can go one or two drops over, and you're still calculation-wise not going to be that many mils over, but you could get really pink because remember on our titration curve, it actually is really, really sharp. And so if I go one or two drops over this, that pink color changes pretty quickly. So this color might actually give me the same percent error as the previous color that I had showed you. And so if you get a really dark color, something to that effect, you might be at the end of the phenolphthalein color. And so don't come and ask me if this is a good color. It's a great color. I think that this is beautiful. But you don't know how well you did with your titration until you calculate it. I've had people with this color have like a 3% error. So just make sure that you calculate it before you panic and throw out your value. Okay? So from there, what you're going to do is do your calculations. If you're within a 5% error, then you can go ahead and do the next titration, which would be your diprotic titration. And that should do it.